The Roadrunner Review is brought to you by its proud sponsors. Please visit Qdoba's downtown location at 15th and Market to try some warm three cheese queso, tortilla soup, or burritos you can't find anywhere else. And Panorama Orthopedics and Spine Center. From sports injuries to spine injuries to total joints for arthritis, they are in your neighborhood caring for your injuries located at three convenient locations, Golden, Littleton, and Thornton. Welcome back to the show. Our women's soccer team entered the season ranked 10th in the national polls, and they began the season with four non-conference games, starting with Incarnate Word at home on Auraria Field. Metro State running with a new keep in 2010 as junior Allie Seahausen gets her first start in net. She stops the first shot that comes her way in the first minutes of the game. A few minutes later, senior Madison McWilliams rips the ball away and finds a wide open Aaliyah DeGeneres who finishes for the 1-0 lead. In the 28th minute, the Cardinals return the favor as Emily Hernandez finds some room on the right side past the diving Seahausen and we're tied at one apiece. Now check out this play as Nicole Renko sends the ball at the keep. Tori Puentes tries to corral it, but is run into by a crowd of people. She loses the ball, and Metro's Ashley Muciando finds the rebound and beats Puentes, who's waiting for a whistle to be called. It never came, and Metro grabs a 2-1 lead right before the half. Second half, Jakey Greer with plenty of space. She finds Ashley Nemers, who beats her defender, then the keep. Metro goes up two goals over the Cardinals. Four minutes later, Seahausen makes the mistake of sending the ball into no man's land. That allows Jordan Garcia to find Sarah Hernandez, who taps the rock past Seahausen for the goal. Incarnate Word finds themselves one goal down with plenty of time on the clock. The ball gets sent in, but Seahausen is right there. She gets bumped, but she holds on tight for the save and for the win. Runners take victory number one on the season. A Labor Day matchup featured our runners taking on Southwest Baptist at home. Taylor Nichols steps up big, scoring two goals in the 2-0 win. Nichols scored two goals all of last season, but she knows she will be counted on by Coach Amarez to find consistency in the goal scoring department. Your Roadrunners also moved up to number three in the national rankings after the great start to the season. Metro State then hit the road for a four game stretch. They defeated Winona State, Minnesota State, and Adams State by a combined score of 6 to nothing. But their trip to Las Vegas, New Mexico was not as clean as the Cowgirls pulled off the amazing tie. Yes, I said it, tie, as it was only the fifth time since 2002 the Roadrunners have not won an RMAC game. Aaliyah DeGeneres scores the lone goal for the runners. Now it's back home for a three-game finish to the month. First up, Regis. They came in having lost their previous 20 games against the Roadrunners. Could that streak end today? Metro gets on the scoreboard first, however. Michael Ann Karras picks up the loose ball and fires on net for her first goal of the season. In the 59th minute, Regis superstar George Miller snaps the quick shot by Seahausen, and the Rangers even the score at one. But the runners respond six minutes later. Aubrey Fondi finds a streak in McWilliams, who goes left of the keeper for the goal and the 2-1 lead. Then it's chaos in front of Metro's net, and Lauren Dorsey Spitz finds the back of the net, and we're tied heading into OT. Nothing goes through in the first overtime, but in the second, Rachel McMahon shoots on Seahausen, who can't handle the shot, and the win the streak dating back to 2001 is finally over for the Rangers. Coach Amaraya says Regis answered every time her team scored. You know, it, Regis is a good team. We've always battled with them. We've always had a rivalry, so we knew it would be a uh, difficult game you know they you know we got the goal early but they responded you know Regis every single time that we got a goal they responded at the end um, they finished more than we did so they deserve the win. So how will the runners respond to the always difficult school of minds? Preseason had the diggers ranked three spots higher than the runners in the national poll but this one was all Metro State. Freshman Becca Medina from 35 yards out over Brianna Schultz for the 1-0 lead. Then in the second half, Nemers with a sweet pass to Nichols, and she banks it off Schultz for the 2-0 lead and her third goal of this young season. Then another player who gets their first goal with Metro State, Fondi goes left corner past the goalie for Metro's third goal of the game. And that's the way it would end. Seahausen with a shutout, and the runners were glad they could rebound after a tough loss only days prior. It feels awesome. We came out yesterday for practice. We worked really hard. And our heart was in it. We, we want to make a statement, and we want to come back and prove that we are the team to beat. For us, you know, we told the girls um, after we just, it's all about how we respond. You know, and I thought today we definitely came out to play. We've gotten some more numbers back, which has helped out a lot. Um, so our, our bench is a little bit deeper, and, you know, some of the players stepped up, which is it's great to see. 
So here are the RMAC standings brought to you by the Hilton Garden Inn. Metro State defeated Colorado Christian 2-0 to go 3-1-1 in conference play. They sit behind Fort Lewis, who is 4-1 on the season. Still plenty left to catch you up on, so don't go anywhere. The Roadrunner Review would like to thank its sponsors, Jason's Deli. Real food is fresh, higher quality, more flavorful, less processed, and naturally better tasting. Get real food at any Jason's Deli location. And the Boulder Broker Inn, a proud partner and preferred hotel for Metro State Athletics. The men's soccer team started the season on the road against two non-conference foes. First up, the University of Mary, as the team traveled to Bismarck, North Dakota. Old school, I like it. Our Roadrunners outshot the Marauders 37-4, but it wasn't until shot number 37 when Metro State finally found the back of the net in double overtime. Scott Grody was the forward that scored the goal. Issei Bissau earned the win and the shutout in his first career start for Metro State. The runners took care of business once again. This time they did so in regulation, defeating Upper Iowa 2 to nothing. The team got goals from Daley Johnson and Mark Hirschberger. In the home opener, Metro took on Seattle Pacific. Our Mac preseason player of the year, Stephen Emery, leading the team into battle. First half, Issei Basau can't hold on to the initial save, but dives just in time before another shot can be taken. Then Basau blocks away the bicycle kick attempt to keep the Falcons off the board. Second half, Daley Johnson flies by the defense and places the ball just out of the reach of the keeper's hands for the sweet goal. With just about 10 minutes to play, Metro gets the insurance goal from Mark Hirschberger, who goes top shelf for the score, and Metro defeats Seattle Pacific by a final score of 3 to nothing. After a 2-1 loss to Western Washington, Metro opened up conference play with a 5-0 beatdown of the University of Colorado in Colorado Springs. It was only 1-0 at the break, but the runners got goals from Emery, two from Grody, and one from Kevin Pocalico, who scored his first ever collegiate goal. The team then went 2-0-1 in their next three contests before their huge matchup with the Colorado School of Mines. The Ore Diggers are the number three team in the nation. Metro came in ranked 11th in the polls. In 09, the runners went 0-2-1 against the Ore Diggers, so Metro looking to gain those important points early in this season. First half, the Diggers with the close free kick chance, but Basau gets his paws on the shot, and Metro averts the scoring chance. On the other side, Grody finds some space, launches the shot, but Mineskeeper Mansville Strand makes the diving save. We're still scoreless after one half of play. Second half, Grody puts the header on, it's blocked, loose ball, Gerald Mata tries to reach it before Strand, but the keep knocks the ball away and keeps the game at zero. On the free kick, Carlos Mendez heads the ball past Bissau for the goal, but no, the official calls offsides and takes the goal away. Into overtime, Grody sends the shot far left past the keep, but it hits the post. Neither team could find the back of the net in this one, and it ends as a scoreless tie. Head coach Ken Parsons knew this game would test the endurance and metal from both teams in this highly touted rivalry. Um, you know, I, I thought this was, you know, this was going to be a good game, obviously, with uh, Mines coming in at number three and us coming in at number 11 this week. And, uh, um, you know, both of us, uh, five games in nine days, I knew that this was going to be a battle. Um, so, you know, 90 plus degrees, I think, here today, you know, and uh, uh, hot turf, you know. Uh, um, so we knew this was going to be, we knew this was going to be a battle. We knew that, that uh, you know, that we were just going to have to work hard, uh, you know, to try and get through this game. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the stats, you, you and mine are the top teams in scoring, but you're also at the top of the list in goals not allowed. Well, what did you expect? Did you expect to be a low-scoring affair? Um, I did. Um, you know, I thought that uh, you know, if a team could get one or two, maybe that might break it open a little bit. But uh, you know, I, I mean, if you look at the stat sheet, I mean, we we're just about even in just about every single stat here today. It's, you know, it's corner kicks and fouls and uh, um, shots on goal and shots overall. So um, you know, th this this was going to be one of those tight games, and you know, it, it was going to be you know that lucky break which uh, you know which um, um, would let a team in and I think that uh, you know if, if there's one mistake to be had I think uh, you know team would capitalize on it and you know I think uh, you know credit to mines and credit to us you know we just didn't give uh, uh, either either team uh, didn't you know just didn't wouldn't wouldn't give so after the month of September Metro State finds themselves unbeaten in our Mac play and six one and two overall mines and Fort Lewis also have zero losses in the conference and currently sits just above our runners in the standings Metro State will travel to Durango on October 8th to take on Fort Lewis in what should be a crucial contest from not only an RMAC standings perspective, but an NCAA tournament one as only two teams from the central region earn spots in the national tournament. 
Guess what? That's right, it's time for another break. More Roadrunner reviews still to come.